In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can use this bamboo edging to create an interesting container for your floral design. Welcome back to today's tutorial. My name is Sharon and I've got a YouTube channel full of exciting floral designs for you to follow along with at home. Now today I'm going to create a design using three single yellow roses. Now if you've been following me for a while you'll know that I teach classes here in the studio and online and often I'm left with small flowers that have been used in previous arrangements and I like to be able to reuse them rather than them getting wasted and it's a nice way of showing you how you can create quite a simple design with just three flowers. So this is going to be part of the three flower series. I foraged for some materials to go with them and I've also got some foliage that I've cut from an indoor house plant. But first of all I'm going to show you how you can use this interesting bamboo edging that's normally used down the side of borders or down the side of pathways to create a base for your design. Now my arrangement is going to be in floral foam and if you don't like using foam then go back and have a look at the arrangements. I'll link some in the cards here. Designs that have got more sustainable and environmentally friendly options but today I'm going to be using floral foam. Now the bamboo matting, this has come from Wilkinson so if you're in the UK this is one that you'll be able to get hold of quite easily but you'll also be able to source items like this off eBay and Amazon and it's quite sturdy it's got a length of wire running through the middle so if you want to make this sort of snake defect with it then you can do that I'm going to use it in this upright position and I originally bought it with plans to do a design with locally grown flowers in the summer so pop back later in the year and you'll be able to see another design as well now what I'm going to do is sit my floral foam in the base so it's a very simple sort of way of creating a different sort of style container but rather than make it circular and round just the same sort of shape as my container I'm going to leave one side extended with a bit of a curve in it so that we haven't got a flat solid container we've got something with a bit of movement and something to make your eye travel along from the garden i've got some formium and this is formium 10x i think this is possibly a golden wave but um, it's one that's been donated to me over the years and this i'm going to extend over onto my left hand side so i've just cut the formium into a bit of a point there so New Zealand flax or formium turnax gonna make it a little bit shorter and that is going to drape really nicely over onto my left hand side you can still see the base behind so I'm not hiding that interesting bamboo structure and it is draping a little bit forward so you might have lost that piece in the camera but don't forget at the end of all the tutorials are some stills of the finished design. Okay so that's one over to the one side and I'm going to add another one a slightly different length so that we have two pieces of, of the formium giving me some width in the arrangement. That's adequate I don't need to add any more greenery over onto that one side but I do now need to counterbalance it in this area here. And again from the garden, I've got some Fatsia japonica. They're slightly different to the Aralia leaves that you buy commercially from a florist and they're that lovely palmate leaf, two big hands. And what I don't want to do is place them in the arrangement just like that, those jazz hands that we see in musical theatre. So these are going to sit together in a cluster on the opposite side and it's almost counterbalancing the length of those long pieces of New Zealand flax. Now I'm lucky here in South Wales because we're by the sea we get a lot of the New Zealand flax growing in the area and it survives really well in my garden so it's a foliage that I can get hold of quite easily. But what I haven't used in a tutorial before is a foliage from a house plant and this has come from the croton or Jacob's coat it's not a great one for surviving here in the UK because our homes are, aren't consistently warm. So we've got cold nights 
and sort of warm days when the heating's on. So this one likes to be in warmer conditions at all times, but it has this beautiful colour in it, this lovely variation and pattern in the leaf. They're all different. Sometimes you get some browns and some oranges, but I've chosen these ones because they're going to give me a lovely colour link with my simple yellow rose. And very much like I did with the materials so far, they've been clustered together. I'm going to do the same with the croton. And these are going to work more towards the front. And I tell you all the time to have width, height and length in your arrangement. And then you've got a really good outline shape. And that is exactly what I'm doing here. So I bring in some of the croton in a group there towards the front. You easily be able to buy this as a houseplant in the UK. If you go to a DIY shop or a supermarket, they quite often have these unusual types of houseplants that you can buy. And you can keep them in your storeroom or your workroom and use them in your arrangements when you need them. Or you can just display them in your living room as long as you keep them nice and warm and don't overwater them. So I don't have a great deal of option of what I can do with the roses because they have already been cut short. So they can sit really well in the focal point towards the front. I'm going to create almost a sort of triangle shape with them. I'm going to put one slightly higher at the back and then two towards the front and I'll spin that around for you to see. I've spaced them out so they're not too clustered together. You can still appreciate the flowers. Gives them a little bit of space to open up as well. You can see I've still got quite a lot of foam to cover but to continue that extension over onto one side. I'm going to try and choose a piece where the catkins are dangling down in this manner here and they are going to look really nice extended out there to the one side. I need to slightly separate them off so they're not covering up the formium leaves. Might be better if I look at it from the front. I'm going to add a few more of these in, just trying to make use of that natural downward movement. And we don't want to hide them, they're such a pretty flower. Although it's probably not a flower, it's more of a seed head. And this one, a lovely extended piece, can come right out to the end. And it's helping to link with those two longer pieces of the formium there on one side. Just beautifully arranged there on the one side. And then to fill in the gaps, I've got some Grisselinia, which again is a lovely shrub that I grow quite nicely in my garden. And it's a quite a citrusy lime green. So it's a really lovely contrasting colour to go alongside the yellow roses. And I'm just going to use this quite low to cover that floral foam. I don't need a huge amount of it. I don't want to overfill it at this stage. I just need enough to cover the foam and not hide those three lovely roses. And that's it for today, those three simple roses. And I will link the series of videos just here where I show you how you can create designs using just three flowers. If you like what you see, then please subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell if you want to be told every time I upload a new tutorial. And if you're really loving the videos, then stay till the end because there'll be a link to another video. So thank you as ever for watching. Bye for now.